everyone. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from round two of the Concordon Galactic Championship Qualifier. Super excited to be here with you guys. It is, in fact, round two. I know that bottom left says round one, but that is a lie. That is a lie of the dark side. There we go. Round two. If you're joining us live, uh, th things got a little... Uh, uh, we, got, we had some bad luck with some disconnections, but we're fine now. We're here. The players are playing. You see that we are, we've already started this clock. We're doing a community team-up with the fearless Gundarks. How's it going, Adam and Odin? Feeling good, feeling good. Can you guys go ahead and break down those lists for me? I also noticed that you guys, all that all, beautiful audio you guys just gave me was completely wasted because I didn't have it routed to the, the streaming program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, that was awkward. How's it going? That's, that's a stream clip. <laughs> that's a stream clip. <laughs> all right, well, here we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Timo Morales, your host of the Cold Squadron Podcast. What have we done? Okay, I'm broken. I'm broken. Okay, so we have a community team up with the Fearless Gun Dogs. We got Adam, we got Odin. This is definitely not the third time we've done this for this round. Uh, go ahead, break down the list, please. All right, I'll go first. We've got Dash, Rendo, and Miranda on one side here. We've got Miranda with Advanced Proton Torpedoes, Barrage Rockets, Skilled Bombardiers, Sabine... Proton bombs, ion bombs. So she is geared to the absolute teeth with ordnance and bombs. And then we've got Dash, Trickshot, Biston, Perceptive Copilot, Shield Upgrade, and Outrider. I know that off the top of my head now. And uh, to me, two big ships, lots of ordnance, lots of power, lots of tricks. Odin. Yeah, um, we've got Luke Skywalker leading the way with Foresight and Proton Torpedoes. Foresight being a uh, variation of the snapshot formula. Uh, we have Thane Kyrell being able to expose damage cards by spending paint uh, with Proton Torpedoes and Noro with Dorsal Turret and Proton Torps as well. So just two highly effective, highly damaging lists. Yep, and I want to remind you that all of our rounds today are brought to you by Curl Park Creatives. Use that coupon code CONCORDON2020 for 20% off. And here we go. First shot here from Dash. Let's get that camera on. Yay, the dice box. It works. One hit coming in from Dash. And, I uh, sorry, this is from Nora. Excuse me, at range one. Nora at range one. Looks like we're spending the lock. And we got hit, crit, crit. One agility, that means it's going into Miranda, and uh, there we go. He looks off. All right, I am settled now. Well, what's going on? We got next ship. This is <laughs> Thane Kyrell taking a shot at range three through the cloud. This is a proton torpedo. Lots of torpedoes out there going full violence. Uh, in this rebel list from Virgil, Gas Cloud will he spend the focus as well to avoid one more damage? And we got a whole breach on Miranda. That means that we're getting a bunch of face-up cards after that. Takes another crit. That's a fuel oh. leak. Good thing that wasn't in the other order. Oh. Ouch. Um, Adam, it's. It's unusual to see Miranda being played on the table these days. Uh, she was a staple in 1.0 competitive. That's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah she was very strong towards the end of 1.0. <laughs> oh, um, oh all right. Thoughts? Well, here we go. Dash rolling oh. natties out here. Rolling natties. Hot fire into Nora at range three. And Nora's taking oh. all of it. This is this game. You know what? With with the slower pace game we had in round one, the people deserve this. They deserve some violence. We got a weapons failure. I think is that what that was? Yes. Nora taking yeah. some pain right off the bat. Here we go. I think this is what the people came for. And Miranda is up next. What does she have in the box? She's probably going to be firing some barrage rockets. She held on to that focus. Hopefully, she can make it worth it. And here we go. That's going to be another oh. three hits. Oh, my goodness. This hot fire, baby. <laughs> and rolled an evade, but that's still going to be hit crit into Nora. 
hit crit, and that panic is a pilot. panic pilot. Oh, my goodness. Two stress. Well, that's the way to get some points on the board early. It is now 34 to 28. Virgil's leading. Now, we didn't even get a chance to ask you guys, who do you think has the advantage in this game? Well, I, I already placed my, all my remaining points on Dash and Nora just because I like to bet on unusual lists. You mean uh, Dash and Miranda? Yes, Dash and Miranda. <laughs> what did I say? Dash and Nora? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dash and Miranda. Uh, if it's me, I'm saying Dan. I'm putting my money on Dan as well. I think this is... Uh... Uh, I think this is clever. It's uh, not something that you see often. And, I mean, after that barrage rockets, I mean, you know, peeking through the curtain, I think I think that's a lot of uh, pain for Virgil to try and um, avoid. We, we do, on the flip side, I, I did place that bet before I saw the whole breach. Not, uh, <laughs> Miranda is in trouble. Yeah, she could um, very easily go down. She whole breach ASAP. Now, what interesting this thing about Virgil's list, he brought these three initiative fives with proton torpedoes. I wonder if this is anti-Nantex tech. Because, you know, a, a lot of people are thinking about it. We do have quite a few in the tournament. I will tell you that. Okay, the bugs are here. But um, having those three proton torpedoes is a huge punch possibility in an opening salvo. You have the possibility to clear out three ships, especially uh, if you think about a Nantex matchup where they may have tractored themselves. Pretty interesting. I mean, I'm I'm also wondering whether Dash Miranda is a anti Nantex um, list as well, just with all of that ordinance on Miranda. Yeah, ordinance, and also just two ships that shoot out the side. They don't need to take uh, a list head on, able to avoid so, yeah. the bumping shenanigans from uh, from the Nantex. They they also both have bow tie arcs, so very likely to get shots on. In the against the boogeyman of this um, season, I suppose you'd call it. Yep, yep. And we have one more. Uh, you know, this is essentially the last big event uh, before we get that next wave of ships. By the way, yes, the Lat gunship, HMP gunship for the droid, and uh, what's the other one? The Psy shuttle. Sorry, brain starting to slow down. Can you guys tell? Going to have to get that caffeine pretty soon. Um, those ships will be legal for crate, so it's super excited to see how the meta changes with those upcoming ships. But here we go, Miranda taking the two left turn, probably safe from shots this turn unless we get some aggressive K turning from Dan. So excuse me, from Virgil. Yeah, I think what you see here too is probably, uh, you know, you've got a take on that Alpha Strike list with the. Uh, PS5s with all proton torpedoes, which is which is good. And then you've got a bit of an archetype from 1.0 trying to be revamped in 2.0. But I think I think it's clever. I think it's something you don't want to see the same stuff over and over again because it comes very boring, very predictable. So this will be an interesting game. Ooh, Luke Skywalker taking the one bank. Could get a nice range one shot by barrel rolling to the left. Get you out of that cloud. It. You got it. Dual barrel. You got the Sorry force, Luke. Yeah, you don't want that. Um, Just. And you also uh, have Nora with the with the turret yeah. pointed to the left as well. You have the dorsal turret on. Mm -hmm. So just for people, uh, myself included, who aren't quite familiar with how Bistan works, mm -hmm. um, Adam, would you like to go over the subtleties of those interactions? Sure. Let me just pull it up. Yeah, Bistan is an awesome piece of tech there. Uh, it, I have become convinced that it is probably the best version of Dash. You, you got to have Bistan on there with Perceptive to be uh, to, to, to be worth the number of points you're paying for Dash. You got to do those work. You got to do that work. So it's just going to be stapled on permanently from, uh, from now on if you're taking Dash Render. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Okay, so the Bistan upgrade card reads as, super boring, but let's read it out. After you perform a primary attack, if you are focused, you may perform a bonus. Oh, hold on uh, a second. Arc, Here uh, we go. We got a attack. shot. 
It's pew pew time. Oh. Four dice. Luke, use the force, baby. Dump him. Yes. He spends both force. We got three hits and a crit. Miranda is not rolling the correct symbol. Miranda is gone. Oh, no. Defeated. She is an initiative four. That means she has been initiative kill. She gone. And those are it's lots of crits. And that power roll paid off. Yes. That is a lot of points gone. Now, I will tell you, gentlemen, I actually am a fan of reading cards because it gets the information out there. So don't call it boring. It's informative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, yeah. So, well, we'll start again. Well, oh, no, we're going to get another attack here. Well, let, let's hold it off till after the combat phase while they're setting yeah, dials. We'll, we'll probably get to see it here. Uh, so two hits coming in from Thane Kyrell. We had that wings closed. Could spend the focus in order to make it two hits. Likely will hold off, I'm guessing, because of the incoming shot from Dash. Yep, that's going to be one hit. Plenty of dice for Dash. Should be fine and is... Next shot coming through, I believe, is Nora. But, I mean, she can just beat the dead horse on Miranda. It doesn't really matter. Dash is really the one next shot that matters. Here we go. We'll see what that arc shows. Did he open up the arc? It's likely. We know that it's range three. I'm just curious to know if Nora's in the range as well. Okay. Ooh. All right. Dash well, that's one. <laughs> Angry, Sorry, four hits coming in. Dash into Thane Kyrell. We got three agility dice. Good idea spending, uh, saving those focus. Here we go. Yeah, no, Dash is rolling very well, and he's very angry after Miranda got destroyed. Yes, and here we go. Here's the Biston trigger. Biston reads that if you have a focus, you can perform a bonus attack against another ship. Here we go. Three hits. And Nora, that's all she wrote, most likely. She only got two hole left. You got to roll natties. Not enough. Not enough. So, we are just Sorry. ripping ships off the table here. Mm. So, Adam, do you think Dash by himself can take out both Luke and Thane? Uh, yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. If he if he flies it smart, yes. If he makes a mistake, I mean, these two X wings. I mean, while they're not being maneuverable, they still have a lot of firepower. And those two, the proton torpedoes, man, that is going to put hurt on Dash. Yeah, it's important uh, to note uh, that uh, Luke still watching, has there both are three of three proton torpedoes left. Yes, yeah, that is that's tight, and he can keep those wings closed if he's got target locks to just, you know, be maneuverable. Yeah. Yeah. Luke is the only one with a target lock on Dash currently. So, um, but yeah, let's go back to Bistan, um, Adam. Bistan, oh, yeah, Bistan? I, think Dion, I think Dion covered it. It's uh, up to you perform a primary attack. If you're focused, you may perform a bonus attack against a ship you have not already attacked this round. So he's double tapping. And I guess that works with uh, Perceptive Copilot because he's going to be getting those two focus if he does a focus action. So he can use one for his first attack. Hold on to that second focus and use it to perform the bonus attack. Now, something else I want to note here um, about Dash, because Dash is carrying that Outrider title, which can be pretty sneaky against these uh, Proton Torpedoes. It reads, um, I believe, uh, let me go ahead and just read it here, that after you fully execute a maneuver, if you move through or overlap an obstacle, you may remove one of your red or orange tokens. That does include target locks from enemies. So you pass through that, and you can shed some of those locks that you've been carrying around. So might be able to get rid of that Luke Skywalker lock soon, um, but we might see maybe Virgil get a little bit aggressive here and try to get that off, because I don't think that Dash can and reach that uh, one of those obstacles this turn. But here we go. We got the first movement from Thane. One forward, probably slapping down the lock, I would guess. And the answer is yes. That was super informative, Dion. Thank you. <laughs> Just taking that gas cloud. Rolls a crit. No, no punishment. And just to say, the pace of this game, a thousand times faster than the last one. <laughs> yeah. We needed it. We needed to get re-energized. Let's go. And I'll here tell you we what, go. I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> Dash does a three bank, takes two focuses. 
Smart move. We're not going to have any engagement this turn for Luke, so that one forward ends up not punishing him at all, but Thane is going to be taking a shot through a gas cloud. We'll see if taking that target lock ends up being worth it because we do see a like uh, likely shedding of the target lock next turn for Dash. Here's five dice, trick shot, oh. one of them out the box. Oh, that is delicious. Not, not only is it five dice with trick shot, it's also outrighted, so he's rolling one less defense dice. Yep, so there's, there basically ends up being no bonus for the obstruction, and he's taking them and all. That, that is likely a dead Thane with two crits. Let's draw those cards. Direct, <sighs> Direct hit. That's hit. A dead Thane. Wow. Wow, Luke Skywalker versus the wannabe Han Solo. How is this going to end up being? <laughs> I've got to say, Luke's going to use the Force. He's got to use it, man. Mm -hmm. Well, at least, you know, Luke is full, but also Dash is full. I think it's going to come down to this, right? We talk about a lot when uh, Luke can be extremely defensive with his ability, right? He's, he can be really defensive, but if you're not rolling those focus results, that's when he can just die really quickly. So I really think Luke could possibly here live or die by the dice. If he continues rolling those focus results, he can push through uh, enough damage on uh, on Dash to make it matter. But you got to look at those points. Uh, Dash is super expensive, 127 points. Uh, you got to stay above half on Luke. As soon as you lose that half, I think the game is is done. Also, Nick, you might want to start looking for other games because we might end this one pretty soon <laughs> this has just been two hammers right like two absolute hammers just going at it to see which one cracked first yep. one, one thing i do want to note though and luke is at a disadvantage here now because if uh dash can get across obstacles every turn luke can't stick a target lock yep um, so depending on how um, Dash ends up being flown, it's it's very likely that it's going to be very hard to take advantage of those proton torpedoes. And there we see it. So that sheds the Luke lock. takes the focus, and Dash just turns onto the debris. Pit. Yeah. But will and... he rotate the arc? I'm curious to see if he's going to rotate the arc, because he can't take the focuses and rotate. He has to make a choice here. Get a shot or have a mod. Uh, I don't know that he got to do either. Oh, no, this, this is um, Foresight. Foresight trigger. This, yeah. Um, just for a, anyone who is watching, it is very similar to Snapshot. However, it does read, after an enemy ship executes oh. a maneuver. Oh, I'll let uh, Dion call out the results. All right, we got two hits. That's going to do a damage right off the bat because it does allow you to modify one of, one focus result to a hit. Yeah. So, Foresight just basically reads, after an enemy executes a maneuver, you may spend one force to perform this attack against it as a bonus attack. Uh, with the attack, you may change one focus to a hit. Your dice cannot be otherwise modified, and it can only be done in the bullseye arc at range 1 to 3. So, even though you're spending the force to take it, you automatically get that modification, as if you spent the force on the attack roll itself. All right, so Dash chose to roll, and Natty's into oh, Natty's yeah. nothing today. Whoo, baby. And Dash doesn't have a shot. This was a turn right there. That was an opportunity for Luke to start to get a little bit of a head, and the dice say no. <laughs> this is where Dash comes into his own, right? He can be very, I'll use the term elusive. Like, he can be very elusive. Very elusive. Hmm. Luke still being a T65 this is going to be hard for him to get in a good position where he can uh, I guess capitalize on maybe snapping off one of those proton torpedoes and I think you pointed out before that outrider every time it's going to hit hit a debris it's going to just get rid of that and you're back down to three maybe three primary or two primary if your wings are closed All but, right, uh, here we go. We'll see. Too hard. we'll see what happens. Too hard from Luke trying to trap himself a dash. And yeah, one of the other things, just the fact that because... Wait, why is... 
Why is Uh-oh. do we have the initiative order right? The first player. I guess we don't entirely know Should who's the first player. Should be second. Uh, I believe uh, Luke, the guy who was flying Luke, has initiative. All right, and first Dash player. is moving second. All right, yeah. So yeah, okay, sorry, I was guys. right. I my 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 eyes just lied to me. No, no worries, no worries. So here we go. From the previous matchup. Range one from uh, Dash into Luke Skywalker. Sensor blind spot. Which that's the only reason why it's three. It reduces Dash's. Uh, Dice by one. Luke able to spend the force to avoid any damage. So what I was saying here, um, because Dash is moving second every turn, he has perfect information. And if he's in a good spot where he can just barrel roll out of Luke's arc consistently, this is going to be a very short game. Um, I think Dan is going to have to uh, just continue to play smart, and Virgil with Luke um, is going to have to rely on not getting proton torpedoes off. He's going to have to do it with the natural dice that he's got, and uh, yeah, I, it, it's going to definitely be an up road, up uphill battle for sure. What 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 is Luke doing here to maximize his chances of getting shots on? Talent I roll mean, by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, that target lock from Luke before, I believe that Dash Luke didn't strip it. he did not strip it. He might might have missed missed Dash that trigger, but he. Would, to... No, Dash had to strip the stress to take an action last turn. Got it. You're right, because it was that red token. Yeah. And this is tidy play, too, from um, the Dash player here, sorry, um, from Dan. Uh, not only is he out of range now, so no torps getting shot at him. Next turn, he's going to fly over that debris, get rid of the... Uh, get rid of the target lock. Probably still be out of range. So this is this is tight play. I like this. Uh, he perform a barrel roll. Yeah, he took eight. So Dash should have a stress token currently. Oh, copy. Because that barrel roll is not a white barrel roll. It is not. He does. He have expert handling. He does no. not. Okay. All right. So that that would clear the. Uh, well, hold hold on a second. So one second. And he clear two. Yeah. I th- I I am unsure on how that actually functions. In all honesty. You're right, it's a red maneuver, so he should be getting stressed from that from the previous turn, yeah. yeah? Yes. So unless he stripped chooses to strip the stress here and take the double focus. That target lock remains. Yeah. So he's gonna remove the lock, oh, not the going stress. Back now. This is good. Yeah. We got it. It looks like he's just taking the stress and clearing that target lock. He doesn't want to take that proton torp. Nope. And he's going to have the obstructed shot here from Luke. He should be safe. Luke only has one hit there. We'll spend one force to make it two. There's no punishment there because as soon as Dash targets him, he'll be able to flip one of the force back over. And Dash is fine. Oh. He's fine. <laughs> I was worried. I was stressing. Dash has a five die attack back reducing Luke's agility by one, so um, he's on, Luke's only getting three dice versus five reds here. No mods or nets. Yeah. We've we've seen Dash do it the last few shots. <gasps> hit, oh, hit that crit. Very close to all. So this would be uh, two dice coming in from Luke, because while yes, it does reduce the agility by one, uh, but it it's it's, it's uh, it basically just negates the obstruction bonus. Yeah. So there you go. So he instead does, of four, it's three. Yeah, he does get the gas cloud trigger, so it is only one. 
But still damage is damage. Yep, one shield there on Luke. Plinking away. Um, and yeah, Dash is just loving these these obstacles. He's just, he's in his element. So, while well, we've got a second of downtime, um, do, do you think we'll start seeing more uh, Mirandas in the meta? Miranda? Especially no, I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I, what I think we might see more is a ge the generic K-Wing. Um, mm -hmm. Because it has a oh. lot of tools that it can carry there. I think that might that might be the answer if you're looking for K-Wing tech. Just don't don't pay the Miranda tax. You don't have to. <laughs> so Luke Skywalker taking that two turn, looking straight into the eyes of Dash. So good call there. Where are you gonna go, Dash? He didn't. Uh... There's foresight. Ow. No damage. Oh. Not only is it Foresight, Dash is still stressed. Dash did not cross over an obstacle, and that was not a blue maneuver. This is true. Luke is looks to be stressed as well, which is why he did not have an action. It's going to be a two range one shots. Remember, Dash, when he shoots, he'll have the sensor blind spot. And hit crit. Spends a force. Hit, hit, crit. He's going to take two shields off of Dash. Trying to get to that half point, Dash gets to respond now. Only three dice. That's, that's good resource management from Luke. Luke, of course, should get a force back for defense. He did. Okay. Uh, I only... may have just missed it. Yep, spends Oof. a force because he spent he spent one for foresight, one for his attack, and then got one back, and cool. had it got it got to be able to use it there. So yeah, I think that's good resource management from Luke, only spending what he needed to, saving that target lock. Uh, sorry, um, that's Dash that's target locked him. No, he is target locked Dash, correct? Uh, Dash has a target lock on Luke. Mm -hmm. um, just for the inevitable five die blank out. This is it, and that's that's what we're seeing now. Is like you see, Luke he's only taken one damage. He's in a good spot next this turn. Uh, Dash needs to clear that stress. So this will be interesting. What he does next? What would you do in his position, All Father? If I if I'm Dash, I I would be sorely tempted to just do a one hard, um, get on that gas cloud, clear the stress, and just try to keep that um, broadside as wide as possible to try to catch Luke. Um, Luke is stressed, so his maneuvers are highly reduced, um, and he, yeah. So Luke starting to disengage, clear the stress. I think he's clearing the stress. Where was Luke's dial? No, that is not a white man. Uh, that is not a blue maneuver. Well, he'll clear the stress using the ability from Outrider, which allows him to do it when going through an obstacle. So he still end up with those. Uh, yeah. So end up with those. I, I I was more talking about Luke. Ah ah yes. Trying trying to disengage and come back in for a reengagement. And, and that target lock is going to be helpful here. We'll reroll that blank. And that's oh. going to be four hits. Oof. Now oh. he's... Well, I mean, he's slowing the bleeding, but that's going to be half points on Luke. This is going to be tough for Luke to turn the tide here. That's right. Now, I do want to remind you guys that after this round, we are going to be doing giveaways. And since we'll have a, a little extra time, we'll do the giveaways that I would have done in between the last round. <laughs> we just kind of rushed. I did two prize packs and, and, and ran away to get the, the next round started. We will likely have a little extra time. So uh, hang out with us. We got some cool stuff.
Yeah. Oh. We, we see Luke here clearing that stress. And barrel rolling to try to stay out of arc and potentially prep for that three talon next turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do I do like this maneuver from Dash. He's just ensuring he's got guns on target at all times. And here we go. Pressure. Gonna, gonna have range one more time. Could end it here. Four dice. There's three hits. Luke looking for some symbols, and he's going to be taking one. Two hole left on the chosen one? Question mark? I don't know. Are you in the chat? Was Luke the chosen one, or was Anakin the chosen one? What do you think? Oh, I'm really feeling. I'm really feeling now for Luke. This is tough. Uh, Virgil's got to push a lot uphill if he wants to um, get back in the game. Dion, you know, I'd actually argue that Ray Skywalker is the chosen one. Oh, how, <laughs> you just wanted to poke the bear. You know, you just came in here to poke the bear. That's the only reason why you came in and said that. <laughs> to, to, be, to be fair, it popped into my head as well, and I immediately said I don't like that thought and didn't say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a talent roll from Luke. <laughs> Oh, oh, Nick, you, you, <laughs> you know how to anger the chat. And looks like we're going to be out of range uh, for right now. No foresight trigger, at least. Yeah, da Dash is just expertly hitting every single one of those obstacles. It, it, it's almost as if he knows this battlefield, and he's just like, I, I take a left here. I'm. <laughs> he, he's just in his element. So, Luke needs to do 8 damage on dash mm -hmm. without losing 2 hull. Um, ah. Alright, so we got that 2 bank there. Going to take the lock. Hoping to have an opportunity to pop off that proton torpedo. No, Not thank gonna you. Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Dash is in the driver's seat here. He doesn't need to force the engagement. He's happy to stay at range three and take pot shots. Um, time is on his side. All he needs to do is stay at, stay in that range three band, and just keep telling Luke to come, come at me because that's that's where he wants the engagement. That's right. Next turn, there's a possibility to get that Proton Torpedo off for Luke Skywalker. If he does a three bank, he'll have enough range. Oh, there it is. He'll have enough range for a target lock. You can light it up here, and as long as Dash is in range, he can get him. And the only way Dash is going to get rid of that target lock is if he turns in, which will end up netting Luke a range one shot at one point. Here we go. That is probably just out of range. Ugh. It's close. It's really close. Takes a double focus. Willing to trade here. Just out. Yeah. Safe. Luke's got to hit the gas. As... Luke has got to hit the gas next turn. Couldn't agree more. Looks like a three bank would clear that gas cloud and put him into a relatively decent spot to catch all of Dash's moves. There it is. Yep. Though Dash could also uh, do a, what, I believe it has a one hard, one hard barrel roll to the right, and that, it might be an arc dodge? Maybe? You don't get a shot, but definitely feels bad. Oh, he reached it! Huh. He reached it! Huh. Force, <laughs> foresight does trigger, though. Get it in the tray. <laughs> Don't get in there. Jeez. And he's set up for next turn too. So he removes the target lock this turn. Luke is just going to waste an action next turn taking another target lock because Dash is guaranteed to hit that dash, 
that gas cloud. Uh, sorry, that debris field. Oh, that's true. Yeah, very right. So that that's something that um, we need to keep... Well, I should probably use names. That's something that Virgil needs to um, keep in mind. Oh, oh no, Virgil, had had, Virgil got disconnection. The foresight. Rip. Now, important couple of important things to note here. You see that Dash uh, would have been able or will be able to strip that target lock. He just able to. He was just able to reach that. Foresight is in the middle of trigger, triggering at the moment. Um, and we'll, we'll keep rolling here in a minute. I'm telling you what, did, did somebody, did, did, we had some bad luck today. I'm telling you <laughs> last two events, last like four events, no problems, zero problems whatsoever. <laughs> what in the world is there happening? Is. Is. That <laughs> demon like animal in the background. I <laughs> earlier i just i was able to join back but uh, yeah, i dc as well like... i'm so sorry i can't control those birds <laughs> no, that's a that was a bird <laughs> oh yeah my yeah. Bird, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we uh my partner and i we nickname it the bonk bonk bird because it does this chirp, it goes chirp, 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 and then at the end it goes bark bark at the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> Don't worry, you may end up hearing a pterodactyl at some point. Oh, back in the prehistoric ages. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is Australia. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, my daughter has decided as of last week that pterodactyl is her favorite dinosaur. Here we go, Luke. Hey. Foresight. Maybe yeah. two hits. Ter pterodactyls are terrifying. Oh, no. And one evade. Uh, Is he able to get two? Nope. He's going to take a damage. That's fine. We're fine. I think our boy Virgil here is, is trying hard. He's trying very hard. It's not over until Luke explodes in a fiery ball of death. One hit. Only from Luke. Jared Star Wars says it's not even a dinosaur. Take that back. I, I will fight you tooth and nail for my daughter, okay? <laughs> Listen. I, I'm 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 nice ninety nine percent of the time. Talk about my daughter, you die. Nope. <laughs> and dash back, Dinos here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Only one, two with the focus. Come on, Luke. Luke, you're trying to use the force right now. Looking for some symbols. Oh. He's bleeding, man. Bleeding. Oh, man. And that's Luke's on one hull. It's just, it's been death by a thousand <clears throat> cuts. Use the force, Luke. I think I think Virgil is doing everything he can with what he has to try and push damage onto Dash and trying to get him into a spot where uh, you know he's going to make a mistake. But uh, you know, looking at Dan's flying here and that rock placement, he can just loop. He'll loop for days. Get rid of those target locks. Sure, I'll take a hit, but I'm going to shoot four back at you or five back at you. It's just a yeah. waiting game now. I would I would love ah. Uh... No, Luke. <laughs> that is aggression. Oh, are we going to get the rotate finally? Are we going to get the rotate? I think we might have to. It'd be obstruct. Yep. Yeah. Obstructed. Ah. Range two. There it is. He's oh. going for the kill shot. It's a kill shot. Dan, you cheeky man. Uh, we have 31 minutes and change left on the clock. So I think they forgot to start is, the time as well. Yeah, this is mm. two green dice versus five. Average. The law of average just says uh, Luke is dead. 
Luke yeah, is yeah, very man. dead. Very dead. <laughs> well, let, let's get you – know, please clap for Virgil and Dead. They gave us some fireworks here in round two. We, we needed that to get the energy flowing. Uh, that that was an insanely bloody and violent match. Just – you take your hat off. You're gonna take your hat off to Virgil, though. He 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 gave it a go. That's the thing, right? That's right. <laughs>